cardiac structure and basic circulation. I'm going to show you the parts of the heart in the order that blood passes through them. So let's start with the um, right atrium. Blood returns to the right atrium from two big vessels called the vena cava. So this one is the superior vena cava. And this one is the inferior vena cava. And it's draining the lower body. The superior um, vena cava is draining the head and the thorax and upper limbs. So we're using blue because this blood is deoxygenated. So it enters into the right atrium of the heart. And then the heart gives a little bit of a pump and pushes blood down into the right ventricle. Sorry about that. So this is the right ventricle. When the right ventricle pumps, it pushes up the blood out, we're going to use a purple highlighter here, up and out through the pulmonary trunk and arteries. and that sends the blood to the lungs. This would be the left lung, and also to the right lung. So you've got deoxygenated blood coming in, and then it goes down into the right ventricle, and then when the right ventricle pumps, that blood goes up, the pulmonary trunk and to the right and left lungs. Now you, there are two important valves to know about here. So I'll use um, green for this valve right here. It's called the tricuspid valve. Or also known as the right atrioventricular valve or the tricuspid valve. So it's two different names. And when the right ventricle contracts, the papillary muscles down here, papillary can mean like carrot and so we'll make them orange for fun. The papillary muscles hold the AV valve closed so that blood doesn't go backwards back up to the right atrium. And it holds them closed with these um, collagen fibers called the chordae tendineae. And then the blood goes up and through the semilunar valve. And this is the pulmonary semilunar valve. Let's see, how am I going to put this on here? Pulmonary semi. Lunar valve. 
and this valve shuts after the right ventricle is finished pushing blood out and pressure starts to decrease in the right ventricle and then this valve falls shut. So the AV valve is closed during ventricular contraction and the semilunar valve closes at the end of ventricular contraction. And the semilunar valve closes at the end of ventricular contraction, or sometimes it's called systole. Okay, so then um, re retracing our steps, deoxygenated blood comes into the right atrium from the body. It's pumped down into the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, the papillary muscles hold the AV valve closed and push blood up and out through the semilunar valve into the lungs where it gets oxygenated. So now we're going to switch over to a pink pen and actually a pink highlighter. Now that oxygenated blood returns via pulmonary veins from the right and left lung coming in from the right and left lung, and now this is oxygenated blood. And then when that right atrium, which is this, when the right atrium contracts, it pushes blood down into, oh, sorry, left. When the left atrium contracts, it pushes blood down into the left ventricle. And then those papillary muscles are also found in the bottom of the left ventricle. And they're also held, meant to hold shut an AV valve. And so we'll use um, green again for the valve. So this is the left AV valve. Sometimes it's known as the bicuspid because it only has two flaps compared to the three flaps of the tricuspid. And it looks a little bit like a Pope's hat or something, so sometimes it's called a mitral valve. Three different names for the same valve. And this, just like the right AV valve, closes during ventricular contraction. And then during ventricular contraction, blood is pumped up from the left ventricle up and out the aorta. So get our pink highlighter again. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so it goes up and out. This blood vessel is called the aorta. When it's going up right here, it's called the ascending aorta. And then it goes across what's called the aortic arch. And you can see three big arteries coming off there. And then when it goes down, it's called the descending aorta. And then as it continues to go down behind the heart, it's called the thoracic aorta. And then where it pierces the diaphragm and enters the abdominal cavity, it's called the abdominal aorta. And meanwhile, many um, blood vessels are coming off along the way. So in order for it to um, be able to be pumped into the aorta, though, it has to go through one last valve. And this is also a semilunar valve, but this one is the aortic semilunar valve. So this one is going to close at the end of ventricular contraction, just like the pulmonary semilunar valve. So the blood is pouring into both sides of the heart at the same time, and then it's going down into both ventricles at the same time, and then it's going up and out the exiting um, vessels, exiting arteries at the same time. So it's coming in veins at the same time, going into ventricles at the same time, going out arteries at the same time. The difference is, is that the right side of the heart is sending its blood to the lungs to get oxygenated, 
and the left side of the heart will be sending its blood to the head, the neck, the arms, the thorax, the abdominal cavity, the lower legs, to send oxygenated blood around. There are three, um, well, let's, th you see these little guys right here? These are the coronary arteries. The right and left coronary arteries come off first. Put this like this. So a lot of times when someone has atherosclerosis and heart disease, this right coronary artery will be um, filled with fatty plaques and it can occlude the ability of the right side of the heart to get enough oxygen to be able to pump effectively. That's essentially what a heart attack is. The left coronary artery dis divides and breaks into something called the left anterior descending artery and that goes down to um, feed the left ventricle. So if this is clogged, then the left ventricle is not going to get enough oxygen and be able to pump as effectively as it needs to. So that would be a heart attack. So these um, coronary arteries are the first to come off of the aorta so that the muscle of the heart gets its oxygen first. And why don't we just, um, what color have I not used very much? Maybe I'll use the orange again. So this uh, is muscle, this is myocardium. You can see that the right ventricle doesn't have as thick of a muscle as the left ventricle, and that's because the right ventricle just has to pump the blood a few inches away to the lungs, but the left ventricle has to plump, pump the blood all the way up to your brain and all the way down to your toes, so it's bigger and stronger. And the atria have uh, thin walls, um, walls of muscle too. So everything in orange along the sides there, this is all um, myocardium, and myo means muscle, Cardio means heart. And then this part in the middle is the interventricular septum, of the, but it's muscle too. And it gets its name because it divides, so it's between, inter means between the ventricles and a septum is a wall. So it's the wall between the two ventricles. Okay, then the three large branching arteries that first come off of the aorta, which we usually include in a discussion of the heart because you can see them so clearly. Uh, the first one is the brachiocephalic, and it sends oxygenated blood to the arm, that's what brachio means, and to the head, that's what cephalic means. And then uh, the next one is called the left common carotid, and it sends blood up to the left side of um, the head, up the neck, and then this one is the left subclavian, just like it sounds, it goes underneath the clavicle, and so this artery sends blood to the left arm. So the brachiocephalic sends oxygenated blood to the right arm and the right side of the head and neck and up to the brain. The left common carotid sends blood to the left side of the brain. The left subclavian artery sends blood to the left arm. So one artery here um, splits to go to the arm and to the head, whereas then these two come off separately. Okay, I'm gonna go through the pathway one more time. Deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium via the superior and inferior vena cavas. It passes through the right AV valve and enters the right ventricle. When the ventricle pumps, it pushes blood up and out through the semilunar valve and to the lungs. Oxygenated blood returns to the left side of the heart via pulmonary veins that oxygenated blood passes down through the right or left atrium down into the left ventricle. When the left ventricle pumps, it presses blood up and out through the aortic semilunar valve and out the aorta. The coronary arteries are the first little branches to come off to ensure the myocardium gets plenty of oxygen. The next branch is the brachiocephalic, which sends blood to the right arm and to the right uh, side of the head. The left common carotid 
sends blood to the left side of the head, and the left subclavian artery sends blood to the left arm. And then as the aorta descends, branches come off that give to other parts of the thorax, and then the abdominal aorta branches to um, serve all the internal organs and the lower legs.